Good morning. See if I can go two minutes without my eyes watering and running down my face would be amazing. I hear you, Sparrow, but I'm not letting you in. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Nobody's here? Is it just me? Am I all alone? Lost in emotion. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Anne. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Marcy. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Terry. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Jen. Dee Dee. How's everybody doing this morning? Oh, I think I'm getting a zit. Hello. Good morning. Hey, Melanie. What's up, Court? Oh, Miranda. I washed my hair last night. I love the name Billy for a girl. Love the name Billy for a girl. If Charlie was not my grandfather's name, Charlie would be Billy. I love the name Billy Ford. I can't say that enough. Okay, so I washed my hair last night. Hi, Joyelle. And I didn't dry it. So this is what we got. All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee Talk. Today is uh, Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Um, I hope that you are all feeling well, that you slept well. Um, I decided last night to let Sparrow sleep out of the cage. I was like, oh, sweet boy, sleeping on his bed. I don't want to wake him. Y'all, if I ever try that again, I want you to come to my house and smack me. You want to know why? Because homeboy, oh, I hear him outside. Michael must have let him outside. Oh, I see you, sweet boy. Um, homeboy gets up every two hours and comes over and he's like, mom, are you awake? Oh, oh, you're sleeping? Oh, did I wake you? Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me go back to my bed. And then he goes back to his bed. And two hours later, he comes back. He's like, Mom, are you awake? Oh, sorry. Did I wake you? Okay, get your wet nose off my face. Go lay down with your clinkety clink collar. Clink, 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 clink. At 4.30, finally, I put him in his cage. Go in your cage. And I think he was happier in his cage because he doesn't feel like he's working. When Sparrow is such a working dog, when he is, uh, like, he always feels like he's working. He's like a worker. He's like a worker bee. Okay. So, anyway, uh, a lot of people in Jersey are finishing up school. We've been done with, with school, feels like, forever. Hey, Mayor, we just got started. Um, so, uh, but we go back a lot earlier than you guys. We go back, uh, at like August 9th or something ridiculous. You guys don't go back till after Labor Day. Um, all right. So I want to talk to you guys about something. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Natalia. Happy birthday. Okay. Um, I want to talk about beauty. Um, there is this sort of collective energy in the in the universe. Now that we are so aware of what other people look like because of social media. Social media is so good in some ways and so distracting and and damaging in other ways. And I'm speaking to adults now, so you can only imagine what the kids must be going through. But social media allows us to see and read what standard of beauty other people are attracted to, right? Like we talked about this before. In the 80s, when my mom was beautiful and she was stunning, there was really nobody for them to compare her to. People would say things like, oh, she looks like Sophia Loren. You know, they had to only take actresses from like the 60s because where were they going to go? There was nowhere to go. Now you can log on to Instagram and compare yourself to 457 Instagram models and feel bad about yourself. And I'm as guilty as the next person from time to time looking at what other people have and feeling like, damn, why don't I have that booty? I know damn well why God didn't give me a booty. I don't behave with the body I have now. 
I am the most irreverent chick you will ever meet with this 41 year old I've had three kids body okay if I had like Amber Rose's body I would a hundred percent I don't even know I can't even tell you it would not be good because in my mind I have that booty but I don't really have that booty and I think that's the only thing that saves me it, it, it would just listen not everybody is responsible with a big booty I would not be which is why God didn't give me one. Um, but I want to say this about beauty. I'm going to be really honest with you right now. So if you could take this honesty and not use it against me later. So like a month from now, if you decide you hate me, if you could not throw it back in my face, I would greatly appreciate that. Don't you hate when people learn your insecurities and they're all cool with them until they don't like you and then they use them against you? I don't like that. Um, so I, I, Here's the thing. I have things that make me feel insecure, right? I have literally the world's skinniest legs, okay? Stay with me here. My mother has the first set of world's skinniest legs. She decided to procreate with a man who looked like he was walking on chopsticks, Okay, God loved my father, and I did. I loved him. But my father was six feet tall, and he was literally one stretch of human flesh from the top of his head to his feet. Okay, I'm not kidding. My dad had, my dad's thighs were the same size as the rest of his legs. Okay, listen, my mom too. Two deer walking on stilts. Okay, those two skinny, ass, skinny leg, no ass having people decided it was best for them to procreate. God love them. Could really, Susan, you couldn't have found some dude thicker than a snicker and gave me half an ass. You had to, you had to meet the hippie Jew from Brooklyn that was walking on chopsticks. Okay, Susan. Okay, whatever floated your boated. I got gotcha. you. Now I am five seven and a half. Walking around on some chopsticks, my back goes directly into my thighs. Okay, folks, there's no bump. There's zero S. So I got chopsticks holding up a spine here, folks. Okay? Chopsticks holding up a spine. Uh, it's fine. It is what it is. My husband has an ass. Thank God. So my children uh, have booties. Thank God they got their father's body. My thighs are so skinny, they don't even touch. Okay, I have a gap between my legs. Some of you are going, that's sexy. No, it isn't sexy because it looks like you have camel toe in every single outfit you wear. Ask Mary, she's my best friend, she'll tell you. I could wear anything, sweatpants, a bathing suit, joggers, culottes, some shorts, overalls camel toe that's what it looks like looks like my vagina is trying to chew its way out of every single piece of clothing i put on my body you know why because there's no thighs to cover it it's just left out in the open it's left to defend itself in the elements okay i don't know how many girls would i don't think you guys are listening to me you guys are saying you would love that and you're not hearing me I'm telling you that I have camel toe in every single thing I wear and you guys are going, some girls would love that. What girls are those? What are you talking about? Are you listening to me? You're not listening to me. I don't think you're hearing me. You're hearing skinny legs and thinking, ooh, I would, guys love camel toe. Okay, I ain't out here for the guys. Who the hell is out here running around with camel toe for the guys? Not this girl. And the guys that love camel toe, ooh, you're giving me reflux. I can't swallow. The guys that love ca camel toe, I'm not trying to talk to them. Okay? Okay. Now hear me out. Okay? Meanwhile, my vagina's out here fighting a war with every piece of fabric I try to cover it with. And you guys are going, girls would love that. No, I don't think they would. Okay? Okay. 
Everyone's like, just use a panty liner. It'll cover it. I don't think you guys are hearing me. There isn't a panty liner thick enough that's going to cover what's happening. If you have no thighs as a first uh, level of defense, no, you're just out there fighting a war. I'm just telling you. So I am insecure about the fact that I have the same size thighs as I do calves, okay? My thighs, fine, I get it. Maybe there's something to having skinny legs, fine. I will not deny that there are people that want skinny legs. But you have to understand something. Your thighs are comparable with the size of your ass, right? God gives you the size thigh you need to hold up the size ass he has blessed you with. So if you got thick thighs, that means you got a thick ass. And I'm already here in the jealous box, sitting in the front row of Jealousy Street, like this. Turn around and let me see your ass, okay? I got skinny ass thighs because I got no booty. There's nothing for my thighs. My thighs got no work to do. Those girls have been on a day off since sixth grade. Okay? And I'm pissed. I am pissed. I got nothing. Okay? My thighs don't have to work to hold up my camel toe, apparently. Apparently, I don't need any strength for that. And I'm disgusted. Okay? And when I go to heaven, the first thing I'm going to say to God is, oh, you got a sense of humor, do you? You, you gave me nothing in the back, but you packed me stack in the front. That's cool. That's real cool. But I am insecure about it. I don't like it. It makes me self-conscious, okay? And when I get dressed, it's the only thing I see. I put on a really cute jumper, and all I see is my vagina trying to eat its way out of the fabric. And all I can think is, really? This is what I gotta deal with? This? I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. And some people go, but you have great hair. Great. I'll have to grow it like Rapunzel to cover my camel toe. Okay? But you have good boobs. Okay. Fine. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to walk around, take my shirt off, and tie it around my waist so you can't see my camel toe and all you see is my boobs. That's going to have to be me. Great. Babe, I was just telling everybody, thank God you have a booty and our, that our children got your booty. Because what would happen if they had mine, honey? Huh? Grim. Oh, he said it would be grim. You see? You see? Anyway. Oh, Lord. Who let the dogs in? Who let the dogs in? Oh, Jeannie, thank you. So the thing that I do have going for me is I have pretty feet. So what I do is I try to wear sandals in hopes that when the man is like, holy shit, look at her big camel toe. He immediately goes, oh, but she has pretty feet. Listen, you got it. You have to work with your brand of beautiful, okay? You got to work with your brand of beautiful. So I just try to emphasize my good personality and my feet. Some people were born with like, you know, I don't know, Michael lips down there. And some people were born with Jay-Z lips. And I, let me just tell you, my vagina is not cut out for them skimpy ass Victoria's Secret panties. No, I can't, I can't wear a leotard. I got... Vagina hanging out all sides. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay, somebody has a crush on my feet, so I already love you. Um, okay, so I love that you guys are... Listen, Sue, I have no choice. Here's the thing. I share myself with you so you know you're not alone. So if any of you is listening to this one today, the whole purpose of me talking about my insecurities is so you understand that you're not the only one with insecurities. I have a ton. I have huge ears. Okay. I'm like baby new year. I can literally hear the conversation happening in my neighbor's house right now. I think he wants coffee. Okay. 
Also, if I'm being totally honest, do you see this green thing in my ear? Can you see that green hole in my ear? That's from a fight. When I was in college, I got in a fight with a girl who ripped my earring out and hit me in the head with a beer bottle, okay? And a piece of the earring is stuck in my ear and I won't go get it out because I'm scared. I'm not scared of a fight, but I'm not letting some doctor dig around with a scalpel in my ear. But sometimes I get insecure when people are like, ew, what's that green thing in your ear? I'm like, well, it was from when I was in Vietnam. It felt like Vietnam. Um, I have a lot of insecurities. My bottom teeth look like rabbit teeth. When I smile or talk, these two are higher. Okay? I got crow's feet everywhere. I get Botox, but they can't do shit for this. All right? So I got big ears, and not only do I have big ears, but I got a damn bullet in my ear, it feels like. Okay? Rabbit teeth, camel toe. What do you, want? What do you guys want to know? I have veins in my leg, my right leg from Max. Literally, at least once a day when I wear shorts, people are like, oh my God, what happened to your leg? I'm like, Max happened to my leg, okay? Nine pounds, one ounce, sitting on my bladder, destroyed the veins in my leg. I look like I was in a war, okay? What do you want me to tell you? But here's the thing, I really do on most days feel beautiful. I think it's because I, I just am at an age where I really love my personality. So I literally just, I just focus on my brand of beautiful. You, you, I may not have anything physically that you like, but I promise that my personality will stay with you forever. Look at Mr. Foreman. He still loves me, and he was my drama teacher in 1992. Lovey, why do you love me? Why do you love me? If my legs are too skinny and I have no ass at all syndrome, why do you love me? Well, what's, what do you, what's beautiful about me? <laughs> he said everything else. <laughs> Very funny. I'm going to get my veins done in November, I think. Because, y'all, these veins, it looks like I got shot. Um, anyway, my point is I just want to let you know you're not alone. Okay? Just find what you do love about yourself and play that up. That's what I do. I love my personality. I love the fact that Courtney French is the only black owned and operated hip hop and R&B radio station in Birmingham, which happens to be the 51st, number 51 in the entire country for radio. This is one of the biggest markets for radio. And I love that I have a personality that shines through so much that Courtney French approached me about having my own classic hip hop and R&B radio show. That doesn't, that doesn't, he doesn't give a shit that I have no booty. <laughs> I know, Shonda, it's crazy, right? Shonda's like, you won't take the earring out of your ear, but you'll get the, you'll get the veins pulled out of your legs? Yes. I'm not touching this for some reason. I'm, I will get my veins done, but I'm not going to touch this. I just can't. I can still feel the earring in there. Boy, she clocked me good in the head, too. That's when I was a fighter. Don't worry, I kicked her ass. Um, all right. I love you guys so much today. Now, every time you see me, the only thing you're going to think about is camel toe. I know it, but do you want to see my feet? Will that make you feel better? I'm going to show you my beautiful color on my toes. Look, I even have veins in my feet. Thank you to Max. God. Okay. This color is gunmetal from the grease. You can't even see my damn pinky toe. It needs CPR. I think, um, it's called gunmetal from Greece. Grease line. Grease is the word. Grease is the word. It's the word. It's the word. It's got ooh, It's got feeling. Oh my God. Kibo just called me Campbelltoe. Now that was funny. Um, 
All right. I love you guys so much today. Oh, I have my own radio show, Sarah. I've had it for like a couple of months on Saturday mornings. I love it. Yes, I got toes like fingers. That is true. But that's okay. I love my feet. Love. Um, damn. Eyes are watering. Happy anniversary, Patty. Um, I love you guys. I'm going to go bring Danielle coffee because Danielle had surgery and I need to go see her. So I'm going to bring her some coffee. I love you guys so much today. My humor tops my camel toe. <laughs> Thank you, Adair. Um, have a great, great day. She goes, I'd rather see your camel toe. Kirsty, that was funny.